Ah, well, let's dive straight in then, uh, David. Could let's start with uh, your life in theatre, if we may. Right. Um, Where and when did it begin? I think the first interest I had in it, I've, I've cast my way, mind back quite a long way and suddenly remembered that when I was about six, seven, eight, we had um, some puppets, Pelham puppets they were, which if they've got boxes now on the Antiques Roadshow would be worth a lot of money. Um, and we used to put on, we, my brothers and I uh, used to put on little plays. I can't remember any of the details, but that was the sort of thought when I thought, I quite like this, really. Mm. But that finished, and then I went away to boarding school uh, in Gloucestershire. And in my second year, there was a very good drama society, and I joined the stage staff. My mm. housemaster's wife was the, the dramatic teacher. Mm. She was very, very good. Mm. So I joined the stage staff. They'd be called stage crew these year, I suppose. Yes. And I did three shows uh, on the stage staff. First one was Clive of India, mm. which I can't remember much about. And I, I don't suppose you could do it today anyway. So um, <laughs> it's a fairly <laughs> contentious not. piece. Yeah, I bet it was. Uh, the second one was Ring Round the Moon, oh, that is which I like a lot. Mm, mm, mm. And if there's ever a show I would like to have ever directed, I think it's probably Little Night Music, oh. which has its original origins origins back to Ring Round the Moon. Mm. Um, and the third one, which was the one I was stage manager for, I, I, I'd risen to the the top of the trade, uh, was Pygmalion. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So we had to make all the sets and run all the thing, and uh, thankfully we had a good art master who was a great theatre a painter which isn't always the way just because you can draw yes so that and i love that i love that a lot and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, then i left and went to university in aston and had some friends who were members of a group called old operatic society mm -hmm. and they said you want to come and see a show so i said yes i'll come yeah which i did and uh I think it was HMS Pinafore. They were doing Gilbert and Sullivan operas in those days because they were newly formed and most newly formed operatic societies did the GNS portfolio, mm. mainly because there were no royalties. Mm -hmm. um, and they started with the Mikado, which I wasn't in. Um, it's a fallacy, really, because the Mikado is one of the most difficult things to do of all time. Mm. As are as are most of the GNS operas. Oh, quite, quite. And if you ask a violinist how to play at the gondoliers, you'd get uh, struck, I think. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I joined up and was in the chorus for many years, and uh, then got a couple of parts here and there, and then I I think I started directing mm. because the director we got lived in Droit, which was quite a long way away. And it was in the days when we had fogs and he couldn't turn up a couple of shows. And for some reason they said, would you take the, take the rehearsal? Which I did with totally uninspired, but I was quite good at getting people to remember things by doing it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I directed a number of GNSs for them. And then we moved on from, not moved on, but we moved to other, uh, pieces and I just had a list of what I did. I did Merry England for the White Horse in Brigadoon King's Rhapsody. Wow. wow. This is so a, this I directed is a, This is at Aston, is it still? No, 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 no. I'm at Knoll. I'm still at Knoll. Aston had got a drama group in those days. Right. I don't may have one not have one now. I know it was a very technological university. So uh, I don't think they did much art. Art and business was about their their their, their game. What were you incidentally what were you studying at Aston? I was I was an optician. I was studying uh, what we call then ophthalmic optics. It, okay. it was it's now called optometry. So so that was three years, and then uh, so even after I left university, I carried on doing null operatic, of which I'm a life currently a life member. They call something different now: null musical and something society, a bit like Stratford. 
uh, and they do much bigger shows in much bigger theatres, but it was good fun. And, and uh, uh, whether it was any good or not, Graham, I've got absolutely no idea because you, you think it's good yourself, but it's what the audiences think. Uh, and then I, I stopped for a bit uh, and one or two other groups came to me in the Birmingham area, Coal Seal Operatic, um, Dinkers Farm Opera, if you happen to know them. No, I don't. Uh, St. Alphage. And I did, I loved some shows I did for them. I did um, Half a Sixpence, which was great fun. Mm. Hans Christian Anderson, which is not quite such great fun. Mm. A lovely show, which I, which is called Irene, which I don't think is probably done very much these days, but it's got some great tunes in it. Mm. Tunes everybody knows, which is probably not a very good story. Um, Gigi, which is probably my oh, favourite yes, show. Yes, yes, and it's great. the first time um, I use revolves. Oh, we really? had two, re two revolves. Really? Uh, and uh, just kept revolving the set because it was a great way of changing the set. Well, that was very uh, technologically advanced uh, theatre then. Uh, well, you had a bloke who, who, who could put casters on a round piece of timber. Oh, uh, right. But, but it's exactly the same as as, as uh, the bear pit did yes. with Ladies in Lavender. Yes, I was on the crew for that. I was. I yeah. was I was one yeah. of those who were turning the with Mike Took. Yeah, we turned. Turning, it, turning. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, it was exactly the same principle: two revolves, um, and it worked very well. And uh, that, that was uh, that. That was good fun. So then I, we moved to Stratford. I was still sort of in in, in around the Surrey Hall area then, a Knoll R area. Roughly where, roughly where are we in time now, uh, David? Well, Fairfield. I thought you were going to ask me that, and yeah. I've got the faint idea. Yes. Oh. Um, probably, we're in the 90s now. Uh -huh. We're in the, uh -huh. probably the mid-90s uh -huh. now. And um, we'd moved, Belinda and I had moved to Stratford. Well, we moved to Wimston, which is close to Stratford. And uh, I had a telephone call. I haven't done much lately. I had a telephone call from Stratford Gilbert Sullivan Society, of whom Paul Tomlinson and Viv were oh, members. Of course, yes, yes. And they were doing um, paste. And the director, Wilson Roberts, had left them for some reason. And they said, would you, would you come and fill in? So I said, well, they're all right. I don't like patients much, but yes, I'll do it. So I went with them and did oh, two or three shows with them at the Civic Hall. Um, and then we moved to the Swan Theatre. Mm. And I had the, I had the, well, I think the pleasure of, of directing eight, eight of the Gilbert Sullivan operas at the Swan. Did you really? No, I did. You know, I didn't know. I don't know why I should have known that, but I, but I didn't know. That. Um, well, don't wow. why you know. you, I got my best review and worst review of this one, so that was okay. Oh, now do tell, do tell. Let <laughs> us. Uh, can you remember anything about those wonderful, the wonderful review? And would you care to share the anything? The wonderful reviews, uh, they were mostly kind reviews. Um, the worst one was all was Yeoman of the Garb, which we all thought and I thought was a very good show. But they sent a, a young reporter who'd never seen Gilbert Sullivan before. <laughs> I, I don't know whether she didn't understand it or I don't know. Anyway, she didn't like the set. She didn't like costume. She didn't like the music. She didn't like the story. Oh, so, really? Wow. So th 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 there you go. Um, I, so, bet the uh, I bet the positive reviews were, 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 you're too modest to say, I bet they were absolute raves. Um, we were very lucky. I mean, they, usually they didn't, they didn't really mention the director very much. Um, but we were very lucky because when we went to the Swan, we were able to pick up some for good principles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People who wanted. Uh, and I got two friends, uh, Mike Hawkins and Mike Tucker. Um, Mike Hawkins was with, I met him at Knoll actually, a long, long, long time ago. Mm. But he was at that stage, I think, uh, president of Astwood Bank Society. But he'd been in Scottish National Opera and the Dorley Card. Wow. Um, he got a fantastic voice. He was absolutely super. But, of course, at that level, you, he managed to get in the chorus. So, uh, but with us, he was absolutely great. 
and uh, my tucky was in the black and white minstrels, which of oh, course wow. you'll never wow. see that again. No, no. and um, and he was with Dolly Cart as well. Wow. And, and there were tenor and a bass, which was which was helpful. Goodness. So they were they were both in two or three of the shows we did. And and were Paul and Viv in these as well? Paul and Viv were in, <coughs> they were in all of them. I can't remember. It's it's, it's both, going back. They both have splendid but, voices as well, don't they? Of course, Paul and they Viv. do. Viv particularly. Has got a splendid voice. Paul has got a good um, sort of low, mid baritone voice, particularly with the the comedy parts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't want Paul singing Ness and Dorma, and <laughs> neither would Paul want to sing Ness and Dorma. But um, I think the public he, he should, got, the public should hear that now. Well, uh, yes, perhaps so. Well, that's sure that, that. perhaps that's your next podcast. Well, yes, <laughs> what a splendid idea, and. Um, so that was fantastic. And of course, in those days, the RSC had um, a winter season of visitors. And Graham Sawyer, who was the manager at that time, was a very, very, very kind and very nice and very encouraging mm-hmm. and loved Gilbert and Sullivan, which was also quite helpful. Yes. And so we did, I said, I did about eight. And then another chap, friend of mine, did two, I think, after that. Um. And then, of course, they stopped the, the winter season. Mm. But it was quite interesting because I, I was remembering a couple of shows. I can't remember what our shows were. I think one was Ruddy Gore, which was one I was very proud of. But anyway, one of them, Robert Lindsay was in the main house playing Richard wow. III. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was quite fun meeting him going. Because in those days, the, the dressing rooms and backstage was all one jumble. Yes. Um, and then we they did... Um, the Buddy Holly show, which names I can't remember any longer. Yeah, no, I can't remember. But that was, uh, there were a lot of extremely uh, scantily clad ladies who used to come come through our dressing area as well. So that was good. I'm sure you averted <laughs> your gaze. Absolutely outrageous. And we had Van Morrison at one stage Goodness. who uh, came down the stairs with about seven to eight mind us <laughs> you didn't say anything to him um, but it was good fun it was lovely it was what, great what, fun. What, 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 a, what an amazing atmosphere there it was yeah absolutely and it was a, a great privilege we and we had some wonderful help from the stage crew at the rsc i mean they did everything we wanted to. they just mm. said what do you want we'll do it mm. and the lighting was done by chapel graham dowds well if you remember him and uh, J.D. Smith, who is Natalie's husband. Oh, of course. Cool. Oh, right. Well, okay, okay. Did lit some shows. Yes. So, yes, um, yes. I mean, it was it was tense stuff because we got there on the Monday, built the set by tea time, by lunchtime. Yes. yes. Lit it at tea time, did a dress rehearsal in the evening and opened up on the Tuesday. That is incredible, isn't it? That so, is incredible. Yeah, but when you've got the right staff, I mean, you know, it, it, it got sort of 5,000 lights up there. And so what, what do you want? But but full houses. They, they, these, the winter season shows got full houses, didn't they? They did. They, sell, they sold. And we made a lot of money. I mean, it costs a lot of money because they, there was a minimum higher charge of 18,000. So we had to sell tickets to, to, get, to get there. But but you don't but you don't expect to make any money, do you? It's it's you break even is fantastic. As long as you break even, yes, we did we did make some. But as long as yes, as long as you break even, that's yeah. that's that's the main thing. But what it an was an amazing always... thrill, though. Did you get to perform on stage yourself? I only got to perform on stage was when the bear pit was formed, um, and uh, the new theatre had been built, and there was a couple of. And there's a picture at the bear pit at the moment. A couple of shows when all the companies round took part, and bear pit opened under the direction of David Mears the first performance with uh, Nicholas Nickleby. Oh, really? Well, about five minutes of Nicholas Nickleby. I think it was Nicholas Nickleby. Yeah. After yeah. yes, it, it, it's a bit like um, you know, I can't remember what everybody else was doing. I just did my bit. Yes. Um, and I, I played a drunk and um, did, uh, did some uh, a bit of Shakespeare and, and that was it really wow. on, on, off, the, like, on the stage on the swan stage on the stage on the stage it was testing uh, part of it was uh, part of it was testing the stage and okay. uh, so we did two of those 
the second time I directed a little bit of GNS with the Gilman Sullivan Society again. But that was great. And I was stood in the wings with um, Richard Wilson, which was quite quite fun for a bit because wow. he was he was yeah. he was the he, he was the master of ceremonies at that stage okay uh, and that's that's good so how did, then you find also, how did you find directing in the swan then what what what, what, uh, what, what yeah, you did it somewhere else and um we we all performed in in the claw center yeah, have you been to the claw center yeah. uh, the stage at the claw anyway well the rehearsal room at the claw where's that then up, the, up at the top. The claw is above Carluccio's in Stratford. Oh, yes, I have performed there, yes. Yeah, and um, uh, we performed everything we were doing, everybody did it, in front of Greg Doran, who said, you know, yeah, that's good, why don't you do that, why don't you do that? Wow. Um, we, we were in quite good, quite, quite good odour, really, because we brought music to it. And th- that there weren't many groups doing music yeah. and none of us doing singing right. so uh viv viv was doing a part in that and paul did a bit and so uh yeah so it is very simple it's very simple come on do your song and go off again but it was good fun that's often the best way though isn't it keep it keep it well keep yeah it simple, you, really. yeah absolutely you haven't got time to be nervous or worried or anything you yeah. just get dressed go on come off uh into the bar and then um, and then we did another one. Bear Pit did another one at the. I think that must have been at the Swan, when we did Dad's Army, a little short bit from Dad's Army. Oh, right. Oh. When David Mears was mannering. Oh, wow. Um, and that was great fun as well. We did the the. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the thing now. The the uh, Terry Wogan sang it. Um, I can't remember the song now. Anyway, we did, yeah. we did it with the whole of the group of actors did um, a song, okay. and David was conducting. So that this was really... that was, <laughs> and yeah, that 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 was that was good. So yeah, and I'd and, to, and and in terms of time, where 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 are we now? Two thousand eight. I think I think we're probably yes, we're we're in. I the the bear pit was it was formed in two thousand and eight. Originally, uh, I, or Belinda actually, more knew Pam Hickson quite well from Horsey Things. Oh. And in 2000, and, and they used to have open weekends at uh, Civic Hall, as it was then, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to make money. That was the whole point of it. And get other groups to come and help and uh, let them perform and all sorts of things. And we used to help. I, I was on the door doing the tickets or something or other. Uh, anyway, in 2010, um, I think one or two of the originals of the Bear Pit, I can't tell you them all, but in the originals of the Bear Pit, had sort of left and moved on. And David Mears asked if I'd like to, to join the committee. Um, and it was just at the stage... I think where they'd they'd discovered they'd found the URC uh, room because I mean it was formed with, with two really two ideas in mind one to as as a sort of central voice for all the groups in Stratford to represent them at higher level if we could get anything done because we never did get anything done by the, 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 and. Um, and secondly, to try and find a, a theatre that the amateurs could could use, because everywhere else in the region has a yeah. small a little theatre of one sort or another. Of course, theater. it does. Mm. I mean, in Sully, in Sully Hall Knoll, when I was working, the, the, they had a wonderful theatre mm. made by, built by the council, run by the council. Mm. Leamington's got Leamington's got one. Kendall's got two. Mm. Coventry's got umpteen, I expect. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere apart from Stratford. Yes. For fairly so, obvious uh, reasons, I suppose. People have just thought, well, what's the point, I suppose? I don't know. Well, the, yeah, but it is an obvious... It's an excuse. It's an obvious excuse, but it's not really a reason. Mm. Mm. Because mm. you couldn't get to... Well, now the, the, the group couldn't use the, um, the RSC. The Civic Hall was really very unsuitable for... 
um, drama. Acoustics are, are dreadful, as you well know. Yes. Um, it's a small stage, or you bring it out the front. And it, 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 it served a purpose, but it just it wasn't a theatre. So how did you stumble across this? Because I remember I've, I've re- I rehearsed in the badminton hall when it was a badminton hall. So there was a bit of a bit of drama going on in there. But who who where, how did it come about that somebody thought this would make great? To, now, to, to... the answer to that is I haven't got the faintest idea. No. Um, uh, I think I mean, Graham, the uh, previous uh, incumbent of the URC, was 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 a very keen theatre person, <clears throat> but obviously somebody or other had seen this this space, and of course it was a badminton hall when we started, as you know, and uh, we began to hire it uh, on a sort of show by show basis, mm. which meant we had to put up um, put up the lights every time we went there. We had to put the chairs in or put a rake in of some sort or other, or build a stage, right. and then take it back down again when we finished so they could play badminton. So the first Bear Pit shows were in an actual, they were in the badminton hall pretty much as was? The very first Bear Pit shows were actually in the church. Really? Um, we did. Dad's Army was the first. And... We did the Vicar of Dibley, the first Vicar of Dibley, in the church. In the URC? Do you mean up at the it, top end where the kitchen is? No, the other the stage was the other end. Oh, at the we altar. Did it on, we did it on the, that, the staging that is there now. Huh. Um, I think we we must have built some... We did. We built some staging coming out, and we built some staging at the back uh, 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 for people to fall off, which they did. Um and so, yeah, and so, yes, we did Dibley and Dad's Army. Well, this was very innovative thinking from the church, wasn't it? Graham Spicer, I think, wasn't it? Graham Spicer. Graham Spicer, yes. It was this... very, yes, it was. I mean, he was, a, a, the first time I ever met him, he said, you know, the church is theatre. It's yes. what the theatre is. And I suppose he was, he was forward-sighted enough to say, look, we're not going to be here forever because we have the congregations are going down. Yeah. Um, and we need, we weren't getting much but revenue from the badminton group. And I think it was a play school was there once a, once a week or something like that. And so, yeah, very innovative from him, but it must've taken a year or two by the time we, we totally transferred, um, to the to the to the hall and, and kept it. I mean, the badminton group, quite understandably, were not best pleased that somebody else would come and start it. <laughs> no. with them. And in fact, up until two years ago, up until pre-COVID, you could still see the badminton lines drawn. So it took us probably took us yeah eight years to get rid of the badminton court. But that um, is really remarkable, isn't it? Going back to the church's the church's role in that, because you, you yeah. one imagines that. Yeah. The, 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 the bureaucracy around the transformation of a church building. Well, yes. I mean, it, it, I don't suppose it's as bad as, because there are a lot, as you know, of uh, old disused churches around the country, which are now mm. theatres. Mm. They make brilliant theatres. And the United Reformed Church in Stratford would make a brilliant theatre. Mm. Uh, and, um, but... He, uh, we weren't doing that. We weren't sort of having to change use altogether. We were just using the the back hall. But of course, to get anything really done, you had to deal with the synod, and yes. Um, yes. and uh, yes. th- that wasn't a quick process, and still isn't a quick process. Uh, so that was fine. At the time I joined, um, um, Simon Allen joined as well. Mm. Um, uh, he 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 was a friend of of um, Anne Bowen, and and because he he was he was a, a land agent and, and industrial agent and still is, so he still, was able still to chair of the board it. as well, isn't he, Simon? I think. Yes, he's still chair of the board, and because uh, he was able to to um, negotiate and knew all the ins and outs of oh, right. 
ins and outs of leases and tenancies and all this sort of business. So, um, so he he was a, he was a, well, a he's chairman of the board, which is helpful, and B he is he, he was very useful in all these negotiations. Um, and he seems to have got pals everywhere, so uh, so so that was that was good, and still is good. So that so that's where we started the first show we did in the hall, as the theatre as it was then. Although we had to bring all the chairs, in. we did it in the round, wow. and we hired a whole load of wedding chairs from Cotswold Marquis. Wow. Um, were uh, was confusions. Uh, of course, yeah. Which of course we've just, just done again just ten years course. later. You, you and I shared a shared a role in that. We did share a role. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have to say, you played it a lot better. Um, oh. And knew the words better. What? A, well, I made them up as I always do, you know. <laughs> um, but it but was good fun. What a great show to begin the begin the project with, because absolutely, absolutely, <clears throat> it was it, it 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 worked very well, and um, and from then onwards, it, well, you know what it's like from then onwards. We had to we we managed to get some money to put the raking up. And then we needed a lighting rig, so all the directors put their hands in the pockets mm. and uh, paid over a thousand, or lent over a thousand pounds each to to the theatre to put the current lighting rig up. So we, yeah, we put our money where our, our mouth was. But uh, uh, that's right. And, and again, you're being very modest with that because. Well, there's a number of things that really strike everybody who's who's involved in the bear pits at the moment. Um, but um, one of them is the happy accident, I suppose, of of the right people. You talk about Simon's background yeah. and so on. But yeah. everybody involved in the early days of the bear pit, I, I'm my my supposition is that all of those people, yourself included, had some sort of speciality to bring, and it all sort of mag magically. Well, not but well, sort of happily came together to produce the the energy and talents that were needed. Yes, I mean, I mean it did. I mean, Pam is a great actress and good at wonderful at what she does. Um, Anne Boeing and and Rob Bowen were the accountants, so so he got that that uh, that that skill bit behind us. And Anne, of course, got uh, was very good at money raising, and we had. Dinners and Alistair, what's his name? Um, the um, impressionist did a show for us and gave us all the proceeds. McGowan. So McGowan is that? Alistair McGowan. That's what. Wow. That's the one. Wow. Wow. So we had, we had, uh, yeah, the right people were there. Why I oh. came along, I've got absolutely no idea. Well, um, you're again. Well, mod you're, this is one of the many things that are deeply attractive about yourself as a person is your modesty. But but you you were just describing, which I didn't know, the vast experience you had as as a director and as a, and and I suppose because you know when you're a director you have to be good at logistics and bringing people together and budgeting on a big scale, which is pretty yes, what you, what you were. Was, you, you know that was well, that, yeah, that's what I was doing really, and and, and so perhaps that was was the case. Uh, when I joined, Pam was doing the secretarial work and playing with the money. And foolishly, I said, "Well, I'll deal with the money," and I'm still dealing with the money. Yes. <laughs> I realised I need to find somebody else to deal. With money. But again, bravo to you because it, but, let, let it yeah. be said before before if I don't say it before we before we finish, um, well, uh, um, you know the testing times that you've recent we've we we you know recently been through. The it's, financing it, has been, it, it, been, yeah, it's been very, very. Of course, it's been very difficult. I mean, you just shut down in March two thousand and twenty, and you don't up, like, open up again until really um, September two thousand and twenty-two. And did I read that that that, about, that we were about a month away from dissolution? We 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 would have run out of. Well, thankfully, we got funds behind us. Uh, we would have run out of money at the end of April in 2021. Wow. And so we put out, as you know, a, a, an appeal. And 
I can't believe how generous people were. We got a lot of, lot of donations. Some, one in particular, very, very generous donation. Um, I think it was hundreds of people contributed, didn't they? So to keep oh, hundreds, thousands in some cases. Thousands. Of, mm-hmm. uh, but it wow. was it, some of it. Graham was was big, big stuff. But the, but also the, very, uh, lots of very small donations, wasn't it? Of course, people, yeah. A lot. There were a lot, a lot of people. Which, which to say them. something, doesn't it, uh, about the love and affection with which the theatre is held regionally yes. well, and even nationally, really. I, I think it is. I mean, I, I, you know, it was a... It, well, without it, we wouldn't be here and you and I wouldn't probably be having this conversation. Um, although you can't take away the past, so we might have been, I don't know. But anyway, it was it was tough. But thankfully, we'd got enough funds behind us to deal with it. The URC were very good and, and withheld our rent. Did they? Or virtually the whole of the time. Wow. And we didn't start, well, from the middle of 2020 to the the middle of 2021, we paid no rent at all. Good heavens. Which was fantastic. And was that a, oh, I shouldn't ask about the details of it, but have we got to pay that back or are they just left no, us off? No, no, that, that really was a total rent holiday. Good Lord. Um, uh, uh, which just was incredible. Um, I, I think from their point of view, that had they continued to pay the rent, we wouldn't be there, we wouldn't be their tenant. No. And we would have we would have run out of money a lot more before. So I think it was a general negotiation all the way around. That, did, um, did, 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 um, did DCMS come up with anything? Did, did, did uh, uh, Oliver Dowden at the time, wasn't it? But did, did we get any uh, regional theatre funding or anything? Like that? Not, not at the time, no. There, there, there are one or two reasons. Um, uh, what, what we now do or are beginning to do much better is community stuff, uh, which is a, a, an absolute must for getting grants and, and funding. Oh, and, and Colin Edwards is doing a huge amount of that. Yes. And he's, he is, our, yes. he's our star in that, that department. He, his experience in community and verbatim theatre is really yeah. profound, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, he, he, yeah, he worked with RTV, ATV for a long, yes. long time. Yes, yes. Um, you did a lot he's of a very... in New York, didn't he? Worked in New York, I think, on a, a number of. Uh, oh yes, he devices. did. He did. He's, he's well worth talking to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we won't, you won't stop him, but no. <laughs> but it's all good stuff, isn't it? And it's, Colin, it's I know all, slightly, it's all, and he's it's all very yeah. good stuff. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, so so we got some of that. Funny enough, the other thing is that if you look after yourselves and don't get into trouble, nobody's going to help you. <laughs> so. Um, we coped, and through the generosity of the good people of Stratford upon Avon mm-hmm. and England, um, uh, the town trust.